by those within the Israeli government. When the orders are given, the operation will be headed by the Central Command in the Judea and Samaria Police District. The IDF will be responsible for securing the perimeter of the target outpost in order to prevent right-wing reinforcements from reaching the area. The plan is to evacuate three to four outposts at a time and not to evacuate all 26 at once. Now, another significant thing about this plan is, is the Israeli army is scheduled to do this. Because they're expecting violence, um, because of the violence that will incur, the international community will say, hey, if we're going to remove the majority of Jews from Judea and Samaria with a peace agreement, this has to be done by international troops because it causes too much problems for the Israeli government themselves and the Israeli army. That's where I believe we see Ezekiel 38 and 39 that coalition of troops that come upon the mountains of Israel to take a spoil. Next article from Israel National News, September the 6th. Police and army prepare for an expulsion. Police and army officials said Sunday that they have already begun to prepare the expulsion of Jewish families from their homes in Judea and Samaria uh, that the government is expected to term illegal in the near future. Officials said that they would need thousands of soldiers and policemen to destroy each individual town and that they would be unable to destroy all the towns at once. The army expects extreme violence, one official said. You know, the Israeli government is forcefully planning to remove Jews from their homes and allow Palestinians who... Um, have a desire to destroy the nation of Israel and are arming to do that and bringing in quote unquote refugees that are made up in essence um, into that place. And the government is agreeing to this. The next article is from Israel National Radio and Dr. Guy Bekor reports that Ehud Olmert has agreed to expel Jews and create a Palestinian state. An article by Dr. Guy Bekor writing in the G Planet news site accuses Prime Minister Ehud Olmert of giving Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas a written document promising to grant the West Bank to the Palestinian Authority. Dr. Bekor, the head of the Middle Eastern section of the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya, said that Olmert gave Abbas an agreement of principles according to which Jews would be expelled from Judea and Samaria to allow the establishment of a Palestinian state based upon the 49 armistice line. The 49 armistice line is the pre-67 borders. Dr. Becourt explained that the issue was not covered by mainstream media because it's the same tactic from Oslo, not to publicize anything and then to present the finished deal to the media. You see, you have to understand how that is how politics works in order for you to accurately interpret the news articles you're reading because the news articles you're reading is not going to be complete presentation of facts. It's going to be a combination of fact and truth and disinformation for public opinion to get the people conditioned for it and ultimately to accept it. And then at the last minute when they're ready to sign the paper, that's when they tell you what really the agreement's about. He just said that. So that is why in, in sharing that, for example, I'm going to be reading what reportedly the... the um, Israeli government has offered for a state, what they're stating they offered was uh, leaving 97% of the West Bank and taking 3% of it and having a land exchange. Well, while that sounds nice to the public and it makes some a little bit of logical sense, that is not what the Palestinians are willing to agree upon and that is not the 49 Arbitsons line. So, um, if you know anything about the international community um, and the United States government, what they insist to be done 
is international law, which is the 49 Armistice Line. And when Shimon Peres says he's optimistic about a peace agreement and he knows the Palestinians aren't going to accept the land exchange, that means uh, making the public aware of an offer of a land exchange is to try to ease public opinion for the immediate moment. Uh, but then waiting until they actually sign the piece of paper and say, hey, guess what, we've already signed it and this is what it means. So the people then aren't prepared to expect it and then once it's signed it's like well what do you got to do it's over with that's how they work and that's what Isaiah 28 said it says to the leaders of Jerusalem Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 14 hear the word of Yahweh you scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem because we've said we've made a covenant with death and with hell and we are in agreement for we've made lies our refuge what is the lie that's, that they're taking refuge in? That uh, they could ignore Torah, the covenant made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That they could lie to the public about um, their, what they're negotiating. The article says, Israeli, the Israeli government has agreed in writing to hand over 6,250 square kilometers of land, the equivalent of the entire biblical and strategic heartland to an Arab terror state. So reports Dr. Guy Bikor, a leading expert on Arab affairs, who also supplies some of the details of the negotiations. Bikor reports, based upon leaks from the Palestinian side, the Israelis have, in the past few days, presented Mahmoud Abbas at least one draft of an agreement of principles that included the following points. The agreement calls for a state named Palestine to be established alongside Israel and have a territory of, of 6,250 square kilometers, the equivalent of all of Judea, Samaria, and Gaza. So in, they, they have now um, agreed in principle to give back 100% of the land area. 100% of the land area. Number two, Palestine will be demilitarized. Now, if you really believe that, and uh, uh, with the, uh, the housing uh, situation in the United States, I have some good Florida swamp land I'd like to sell you. Any buyers? Number three. Most of the Jewish communities built in Judea, Samaria over the past 40 years are to be demolished and their inhabitants expelled. Did you get that? Most of the Jewish communities built in Judea and Samaria over the past 40 years are to be demolished and their inhabitants expelled according to the plan. The remaining communities are to be concentrated in small salients for which the Arab state will be compensated with additional territory elsewhere in present-day Israel. That's what's been offered for now, but like I said, that's not what the Arabs are willing to agree to. And remember, Zippy Livni said, that we can't freeze the situation. We've got to take advantage of the opportunity. That means if the Palestinians say no deal, um, if they're going to take advantage of the window of opportunity, they've got to give in. Number four, a passage of some sort will connect Gaza and Judea Samaria. It will be under Jewish sovereignty and Palestinian administration. Okay, so you really believe that that's, end, that's got to end up being the case as well. That... The Palestinians will have sovereignty over Judea and Samaria, but not the passageway to get to Gaza. Because Gaza is going to be a part of the state as well. You think they're going to grant full autonomy to Gaza and the West Bank, but then have sovereignty over the passageway? No, it's not, it's not going to happen either. Israel agrees to divide Jerusalem. Arab neighborhoods will be under Arab sovereignty and Jewish ones under Jewish sovereignty. Mention is made of religious areas, but further details are not known as of yet. Each side will recognize the other's spiritual needs. So that means Jerusalem has got to be an international city. And that is why Shimon Perez just went to see the Pope in the past week. Because he's talking with the Pope about when Jerusalem becomes an international city, the role of the Catholic Church in making it an international city. So, if Israel's ultimately got to give everything that the Arab wants, why, why does, is it looking like they're negotiating? 
because in the West, you have to make it look like you're negotiating, even though you